The group also tried seeing how he could stand and possibly take steps between parallel bars by simply holding a pair of poles. In the villages of Kotaput, we saw quite a number of children with club feet, like this child. These deformities are often familial, a genetic problem related to inbreeding. One of the leaders of the local program was an orthotist who had been trained to straighten club feet using plaster casts. But unfortunately, none of the local children with club feet had had their deformed feet corrected. If serial casting had started soon after birth, many of these children's feet could have become almost normal. The mediators at the workshop, who worked in community rehabilitation programs in many parts of India, wanted to learn how to correct a child's club feet with serial casting. The Vikash orthotist offered to demonstrate the technique on this boy. However, the orthotist was a bit rusty, and one of the mediators, a nun who was also a nurse, took charge very capably. In India, people can't afford plaster bandage for casting, because it is too expensive. So to save money, they roll their own using plaster of Paris. Here the sister sprinkles the plaster powder on strips of thin cloth. She rolls them up and dips the homemade bandage in water. Here two of the mediators are casting the boy's foot and leg. They did an excellent job. Jaya Ram is a bright little boy with cerebral palsy. A specialist had classified him as mentally retarded, assigning him an IQ of 55. Simply because the boy had CP, it was presumed he was mentally retarded as well, but the boy was sharp as a whip. Jayaram was unable to walk. He could stand very briefly, but he had athetosis, uncontrolled movements that would throw him off balance. He would try to take a step, or even just try to stand, and he would immediately lose control and fall down. We found a stick lying on the ground and asked Jaya Ram to start using it to see if he could balance better on three points rather than two points. With CP, both spasticity and uncontrolled movements, or athetosis, tend to increase when the child is frightened or nervous. When he feels more secure and less worried, the child tends to relax more. Stabilizing himself with the stick gave Jayaram greater confidence and control. Here you can see how relatively well he's standing there just with this stick. The group discussed possible assistive devices for Jayaram, perhaps a walker or a cane with feet on it for improved stability. But in the area where he lives, the terrain is so steep and irregular that even a cane with feet on it wouldn't help stabilize him well. So they decided probably a simple walking stick might work best. Jaya Ram, as it turned out, had already been donated a wheelchair. But his wheelchair, just like wheelchairs all over India and the developing world, was way too big for him. He sat in a slouched position, his feet in the air, far from the footrests. In the initial presentation on the day of the workshop, they tried parallel bars with Jaya Ram, but for some reason he was more awkward with the bars than with the stick. Here you see Jaya Ram in his wheelchair, now with a broad backrest, a cardboard insert to hold his buttocks in a good position, and a cardboard footrest. He now sits in a much better position. However, Jayaram's wheelchair is of little use in the rough terrain where he lives. Before giving him a wheelchair, it probably would have been wiser to first evaluate his potential for walking. The wheelchair is now better adapted, although still far too big, and may be useful for going long distances. But around his home, the walking stick is likely to be much more fitting. I have very little doubt that within a few months, Jayaram will be able to go long distances with just his stick. In the slide presentations before the workshop, to share ideas about simple homemade assistive devices, I included the story of Maricela from our book Nothing About Us Without Us. In the story, Maricela's father invents a hand exercise device out of a piece of split bamboo. Adapting this idea in the Kotaput workshop, 
a local carpenter made a similar bamboo device for Jaya Ram to exercise his hands, which he's showing here. One of Jaya Ram's hands is spastic such that he can't control it very well. Here, a mediator shows a marvelous therapeutic game that his group invented for him. His challenge is to raise the ball of yarn by pulling the rope that passes over the stick. To do this, he has to use his weaker, more awkward hand as well as his other hand. He quickly caught on to the game and enjoyed it. They made a walking stick for Jaya Ram with a little ring around it. In the background is the little boy with the standing frame. Trinath is a young man who as a child had polio, which paralyzed one leg. He could walk without crutches or orthopedic appliances, but he pressed his hand against his thigh to keep the knee from doubling and bending. This meant he had to bend over a lot, and this was causing trouble with his spine. He wanted to be able to walk more upright and without having to press his knee back. On examination of Trinath, the group found he had a contracture of his knee, which prevented it from straightening all the way. They figured that if the knee could be straightened, or over-straightened, so that it bent back a tiny bit, that he would be more likely to be able to walk without having to push his knee back with his hand. The fact that he had a modest drop foot contracture in the foot might be a help, in that when he put his weight on the foot, because the ball of his foot touched the ground first, it tended to push his knee backward. Trinath had also spent a couple of years apprenticing in a tailoring shop of the CBR program. Also in the tailoring shop were two girls affected by polio who walked with poles rather than crutches. Although they were all being helped to learn skills for income generation, apparently no one in the program had explored ways to help them walk better. For Trinath and the girls, it was important they have walking aids that would help prevent rather than cause additional deformities. Trinath volunteered to help in the workshop with the idea of learning skills to help others. To improve his walking, he and his group decided to make a night splint that would gradually straighten his knee contracture by putting pressure to straighten the leg all night long. They decided to make the night splint out of bamboo. A local bamboo craftsman helped out he started by splitting a two-foot length of bamboo into halves. In one half, he carved out the inside with a small axe to make it thinner so Trinath's leg would fit inside. Next, he heated the top of the bamboo and skillfully opened it enough to fit around Trinath's thigh. Here, Trinath is preparing the small gas stove for heating the bamboo while the craftsperson carves it thinner. When Trinath tried on his new bamboo leg straightening splint, he was delighted. With padding added to the inside, it was comfortable. Although it was intended for night use, he tried walking on it. To his delight, he found he could walk with it fairly easily without having to put his hand against his thigh. This let him walk in a much more upright position. Though intended for night use only, he began using it for walking during the day. By using it both night and day, it would stretch his knee contracture faster, so that if all works out well, he'll be able to walk without the brace and without having to hold his knee with his hand. In the final closing evaluation session, Trinath and Jaya Ram demonstrate their assistive devices. In this picture, you can see the ring on the walking stick just below Jaya Ram's hand. This lets the boy grip the stick more securely. One of the two girls in the tailoring shop who walked with poles was Kamala. Her left leg, paralyzed by polio, is very contracted and much shorter than her other leg. For years she had been walking with a pole, which she held to one side with both hands. This was causing a tremendous spinal curvature. Walking with the pole was causing her a great deal of harm. So Kamala and her group made a pair of simple crutches for her. These helped to straighten her body out, as well as let her walk more easily. 
Another one of the girls in the tailoring shop was Berarthi, who also walked with a stick. She could put some weight on her weaker leg, but couldn't sustain her weight completely, so she used a long stick, which she had to hold with both hands. Her wish was to walk with a single crutch, so she could carry things with her other hand. One member of Berarthi's group was the man in the wheelchair you see here, who has spina bifida. In India, you don't see many people with spina bifida, because most of them die as children, because they don't get the spinal surgery they need. This man with spina bifida has become a leader of the local disability association that is struggling for the rights and opportunities of disabled people. He joined the team of mediators and helps out with the local CBR program. I had encouraged him to try to get more members of the local disabled organizations to be involved. Here you see how Bharati walked with her stick before she got her crutch. Here her group is making an adjustable wooden crutch for her. In contrast to the vast majority of crutches made in India, Bharati's crutch was measured for the correct shoulder and hand height. Here, in the final evaluatory session, the two girls from the tailoring shop demonstrate how much better they can now walk with their crutches. One of the participants who wanted a disability aid made was David, myself. In India, I encountered a big problem with going to the toilet. In the rural areas, there often are no toilets. People just go out into the fields. Where there are toilets, they tend to be just a hole in the floor, four inches across, which you squat over. And of course, there's no toilet paper available, because traditionally people use water. I have a disability, a hereditary progressive muscular atrophy, that makes it hard for me to squat and keep balance when toileting. If I hold on to something, I can squat fairly well, but if I'm trying to wash off my backside with water, it takes two hands one to hold the water pot and the other to wash. Trying to keep my balance while doing this is virtually impossible for me, an exercise in frustration. So I suggested to one of the leaders of the program that maybe for people who have trouble with squatting and keeping balance, providing a simple commode or potty that could fit over the toilet hole or used in the fields might be a big help. But the leader said, oh no, here in the rural areas, the tradition is to go out and squat in the ground. We don't want to impose Western ideas on the villagers. If you insist on suggesting such unthinkable ideas, pretty soon people won't be inviting any more Americans to visit the program. But I persisted because I really needed an alternative. Let other people do what they want. But if I'm going to spend days in this workshop with only a hole in the floor for a toilet, I need something I can sit on. I suggested that one of the groups make me a box with a hole in it to use as a toilet. So they did. In the final evaluation session, like everyone else, I had to demonstrate my assistive device. When I sat on my toilet box, everybody laughed and found it very amusing. But it really broke the ice on what had been a very difficult to discuss issue. After that, all kinds of people who hadn't dared express the difficulties they had with toileting spoke up and began to ask for toilets. In fact, the toileting box became one of the most requested assistive devices in my whole visit to India. In the preparatory session for the subsequent workshops, I showed photographs of me in my special seat, so the idea got out there and people felt they could dare express their need. Perhaps one of the best outcomes of the workshop was that disabled persons and their families were beginning to express their own felt needs and to work towards finding solutions on their terms. Workshops for Making Assistive Devices for Disabled Children Facilitated by David Warner for Mediators of the Liliana Foundation Health Rights Workgroup for People's Health and Rights Visit us at healthrights.org.